Let's see, are we live? I think we are live. Definitely, we definitely have a lot of things to talk about. <laughs> about how things are going to work forward and what our goals are. It sounds like... Definitely, we definitely... Ah, yes. Wait a minute. Yep, that's the big thing right now is that we have to figure out how to set video titles before we go live. <laughs> Oof, kind of embarrassing, but oh well. A, l a while back I couldn't even use OBS, so alright, console war. There we go. All right. Ah, yes, and now that I need to tag it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, PlayStation Persona. Yeah, because it's seven. Ooh, there's so much stuff to talk about. I can't even. Uh, there's been so much stuff I've wanted to talk about over the past couple of days. It is impossible to keep track of everything. To uh. To keep up. To pff, talk about it all. It's just. A complete mess. Let's see. Let me make sure that's... Yep. Awesome. Here we are. So, yes. Uh, welcome to the first episode of the Console War Room. Our official meeting place to discuss the failures, the countless failures of PlayStation and the <laughs> continuing dominance of Nintendo Switch. And there are a lot of things we need to talk about, a lot of things, namely the recent very large disappointment, very, very big disappointment of Platinum Games resorting to a Kickstarter to fund their project. I was not aware of all the details when I made my initial reactions. I was sort of unwilling to sort of accept the situation because it was a very terrible situation because how dare these video game developers ask for money for a port? Like that's all it came down to is that they easily could have released the game on Switch with their own money and yet they chose not to. They chose to scam their fans instead. And I think it is imperative going forward that we prevent, preemptively prevent this kind of situation from ever happening again. We need to bring up how scummy it is. It needs to be addressed. It needs to be talked about. It needs to be discussed. It needs to be a consensus among the community that Kickstarters are not a good thing. We live in an era where there are far, far more disasters that came from this Kickstarter than successes. Do you understand me? We live in an era of like the Mighty Number no. 9s, the Shenmue 3s, the countless other broken, unfinished, unpolished releases that are nowhere near where they should be, and yet somehow people, people, uh, Reset Era users are not people, uh, certain individuals are, uh, are of a certain persuasion are still throwing their money out there anyway. Uh, since we're talking about the wonderful 101, let's see, uh, Kickstarter, I believe the game has only gotten something like, what, 20,000 backers and they got a million uh, let me see here let's see how much they got what's the current state of this um 
Yep, yep, 22,000 backers. Holy shit, right? A million and a half dollars for a port. Downright disgusting. Just downright ridiculous. I am not at all impressed with uh, with the results of this. Um, For a bunch of different reasons. Uh, it's taken me a while to kind of uh, go through this and really rationalize what exactly happened here, but apparently Platinum, in an interest to self-publish their game, um, went to Nintendo and suggested that they go ahead and uh, find their own path, or like fund the game on their own, and Nintendo agreed to that. And in order to fund the project, Platinum went ahead and went to Kickstarter. So it was not Nintendo's idea to go to Kickstarter. So uh, with that in mind, I am officially rescinding my boycott of uh, Nintendo Switch products. Um, they still should not have allowed the game to go multiplat, but they weren't the ones to take the game to Kickstarter. That is entirely on Platinum, and it is entirely their fault that they took a million and a half dollars from fans in order to to fund this port. And it is a port. So instead of making new games, instead of doing something new with the IP, instead of just, you know, releasing the game hot on the heels after the success of Astral Chain, they decided to scam fans. And um, they, fans must have put a lot of money into this. Let's see, calculator. Let me, let's see what the average must be, because uh, people donated thousands of dollars to this. Ooh, ooh, did people take away money? Maybe, uh, okay, it went up. Okay, so let's see. What is the calculations here? Okay, so 1 million, let's see, 935. Is that really right? Hang on. Okay, so people are back. On average, a backer down. On average, a backer <laughs> uh, donated about sixty-four dollars. I, I thought it would have, would have been a lot more than that. Uh, I imagine there are a lot of cheapskates here. Like I imagine some people went with the bare minimum. Let's look at the um, the registry here. But there are plenty of people, and I imagine this is the real problem here. There were plenty of people, including a featuring a secret special guest. Oof, I wonder what that's supposed to be. Is it a giant PlayStation? Ugh. Ugh. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm saying I'm I'm going to say this right now. Um, do not support the PC or the PS4 versions. You want the Nintendo Switch version. Um, for sure. This Kickstarter should not exist, but uh, that that does not mean that you should not support the Nintendo release. Because the game is legitimately wonderful. I love it a lot. It's it's a great game. Uh, but again, the main problem is that this Kickstarter should not have existed. Let's see. How many people? Okay, Pledge. Wonderful music. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The music is pretty great. <laughs> yeah, uh, here I am shitting on this Kickstarter. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, the game. It's great. Oh, the music. I love it. Oh, <laughs> Uh, this is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, so, yeah, it really, really cannot be stressed enough just how disappointed I was with this sort of, uh, with this situation. With this um, situation. And, um, yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Um, I find it very, very incredible how people who spent years bitching about this game, calling it, like... <laughs> a piece of shit, like, insisting that, like, Bloodborne was better. Uh, people like that, like, people who spent years trying to dismiss this game and the Wii U are now happily su showing support for this Kickstarter. There isn't any real skepticism or criticism of it at all. And I really do think if this game um, was Kickstarted exclusively for a Switch port, there would be a lot more skepticism and a lot more backlash. Um, I myself would still be very angry if that was the case. I, I, I maintain that the Kickstarter should not exist uh, no matter what. But oof. I, I, um, oof. 
Yeah, comics, art books. Like, just release this stuff separately. You don't need this. Ki you don't need this Kickstarter. Just ugh. fans would buy it anyway. In fact, I think most people would pay more for an exclusive comic. I love the Wonderful One One. This is my favorite superhero team of all time for a reason. They're amazing, and yet they completely botched it with this unnecessary Kickstarter. Um. Yes, I'm wondering just, um, this is definitely the, uh, the disappointment of the year so far, the, the nature of this Kickstarter. And the lack of real backlash from the community is very, very disgusting. I am appalled by the sheer amount of people who are not calling this what, what for what it is, a complete scam. The game does not need to be self-published. The game does not need to be re-released on other cons on, on, on other platforms. It, it doesn't need a Kickstarter. Th there are all these major red flags that just prevent me from really, really getting excited about this. The only thing that makes me happy about this is that the best game on PS4 is now a seven-year-old Wii U port. <laughs> That's hilarious to me. So now no longer people can like give me shit about like, oh, Bloodborne, it's the greatest thing ever. I can just say, Wonderful 101 is better. And it is. And be completely serious about that. And uh, pfft, that, that leads to my next topic. Um, how well exactly is this game going to do? It got backed. But um, by really dedicated hardcore fa hardcore fans, right? People who have been like following this game and platinum, you know, hardcore fanboys and stuff like that. A lot of people were uh, pushing for this game. Like a lot of people are super in love with this game. It's a cult classic, you know, considered by Wii U fans to be the best game on Wii U. Well, I personally consider it the best Wii U exclusive. Fantastic game. Oh, 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 another topic. Um, the Wii U is still a great console. <laughs> That's another thing the Pretendos are doing. Oh, all these games are getting re-released on, on Switch. Uh, the Wii U is dead. No. No. I personally am not buying this game again. I am just going to play the original, the one I own, the one I showed off on that video the other day. There's no... Ch I'm not going to get rid of my Wii U so I can buy this game again. Like, what am I going to do? Like, 101% it again? That's ridiculous. Like, the Kaku Rigas are, like, the most obnoxious things I've ever done in my life. I, I hate those. Just... Ugh. They're so annoying to find, but anyway, uh, I'm not going to lose all of my progress on my Wii U version of the game in order to buy a Wii U, like, a port. Like, it's not even, like, just like I haven't bought Captain Toad, just like I haven't bought, like, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, just like I haven't bought, like, uh, what's another Wii U port? I don't, I don't even know. There are lots of, um, Assassin's Creed was ported to Switch. I, I don't own any of those. Um... There are lots of there are lots of examples of games that I own on own on Wii U that I am not going to replay on Switch. Um, I don't think I own a single Wii U port that I already own. So, so, so um, it 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 needs to be said more that the reason so many Wii U games are coming to Switch and are successful is because those games were great to begin with. Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. Breath of the Wild, Splatoon, like these are legitimately generation defining titles and no amount of damage control from the pretendos, the pre the PlayStation fanboys on Reset Era, NeoGAF, E, Twitter, like no matter how much you complain about, oh, how much I didn't like the Wii U. The simple fact of the matter is that the best selling game on Switch, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, is a Wii U port. <laughs> The Wii U was a phenomenal console, and it makes me so happy to see Wii U games get the love and appreciation they deserve. Tokyo Mirage Sessions, uh, which is apparently the anti the antithesis of this, because Tokyo Mirage Sessions came out with new content with none of this bullshit attached to it. Like people are spamming this idea that like, oh, the Wonderful One One didn't do very well, so uh, that's why they had to resort to Kickstarter. Bitch, Tokyo Mirage Sessions exists, okay? Tokyo Mirage Sessions is like, 
the most niche game on Wii U. Far more niche than this, for sure. Like, I cannot imagine anybody seeing what this game looks like and not thinking it's the coolest thing imaginable. I, if the game, the, o the only thing I think could have put people off to it is maybe the cartoony visuals, but once you actually see what the game is like, like how it, how it plays, how it handles, how hardcore it is, like it's very, very difficult not to put it on par with its uh, its sister game, Bayonetta. I, uh, for a really long time, I considered the wonderful 101 and Bayonetta to be like equals. I, I guess I still kind of do, uh, but Bayonetta was ported to Switch with no strings attached. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm still not sure whether I prefer Bayonetta over the Wonderful 101. They're both stellar GOAT titles, like the greatest of all time, like the best action games of all time. Like right up there with God Hand and Resident Evil 4. You know, probably better than Resident Evil 4, to be completely honest with you. Um, yeah, yeah, God Hand, uh, Bayonetta, Wonderful 101, like legit the greatest video games of all time. Oh, I probably should um Keep it on the Kickstarter page. Uh, um, but yeah, it did not need to be kickstarted. It needed to be... just. It just needed to have a standard release. Like, hey, uh, Astral Chain was a hit. We're really happy about that. And here's a port of, the, of a game that heavily influenced it. The Wonderful 101. Uh, the Wonderful 101 is... Um, vastly, vastly superior to Astral Chain, by the way. I like Astral Chain. I like it a lot, but it really can't hold a candle to the wonderful 101. Um, um, that, that's all they needed to do. Just write off that Astral Chain hype, like, build off of that, um, release the wonderful 101, and not resort to this situation. And uh, that, that leads to another point. Uh, what are the other three projects of the Platinum 4 are going to be? Let's see. Do I have it here? Uh, here we go. Wait. Shit. I probably should have had this brought up beforehand, but all right. Do 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 do. So, what are the other four? Platinum, uh, the other three Platinum games going to be, because they've already severely underwhelmed with me with this one released. Uh, so, what are the other three going to be? Are they going to be more ports? Are we going to get, like, Nier Automata on, on PS4? Yeah, this is how disappointing I am, how disappointed I am in the Wonderful 101. Like, I am not optimistic for Nier Automata coming to Switch because I am worried they're going to put another Kickstarter to it. And the fact that it's coming second with no hype behind it, or maybe even later, uh, that, that just makes me very, very skeptical. And uh, really, when you get right down to it, that really should have happened already. Like, Nier Automata should have been on Switch day one, to be completely honest with you, or at least launched alongside the Xbox One version. There, ha there has been... There has never been any justification to keep that and other major third-party games off of Switch. There has never been a reason for that. Yakuza 7, Persona 5R, Monster Hunter World, their Resident Evil 2 Remake, Devil May Cry 5, Devil May Cry 4 as well, for that matter. Uh, there, there's been no real adequate reason to justify not putting these games on Nintendo hardware. Let's see here. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, if Wii U was so embarrassing as a console, these bandwagoners wouldn't need all these Wii U games on Switch and PS4. Yep. Wii U is the great. Yep. Yes, yes. I, I, I fully expect the wonderful 101 Switch to sell the most out of these three platforms. A PC might have a little bit of legs to it, but I fully expect the PS4 version of the Wonderful 101 to outright bomb. Like, have you seen the sales for uh, Travis Strikes Again? <laughs> like, they are, like, abysmally bad on PS4. Like, they are just awful to the point where, like, I don't even know why they even bother. There is no audience for these games on PS4, and yet developers are still, like, seriously trying to pander to that demographic. 
by fucking over Nintendo fans. Like, they won't port PS4 games to Switch, but they'll do everything they possibly can to justify putting Wii U Nintendo games on PS4. Like, Zombie U was a gr is a great example of that. Like, that has not been re-released on Switch. They're not even talking about it. And yet they re-released re a PS4 and Xbox One version that got hilariously higher scores than the original Wii U version, despite being worse. Um, yeah, yeah, Zombie U, oh, that is like the biggest missed potential of the Wii U library. Like, let's be real here. That game had so much potential. There was so much there that I legitimately liked. It just didn't come together very well. If they made a sequel, like if they just expanded on the idea, like made it non-linear, sort of, sort of made it like a sprawling open area that you sort of had to like learn and like uh, sort of grow and adapt and sort of, like maybe not have a, a very linear plot. Like it could have been a legitimately like great horror game, and um, I'm surprised nobody talks about it now. It it was one of those Wii U games that got slammed upon release when it was actually. You know, talking about it kind of makes me want to go back to it, to be honest with you. Um, I have it on me. Uh, I have it in my drawer here. Uh, yeah, yeah, why, why don't we uh, talk about that? Why don't I uh, bring it out for another go? Uh, it's been years. I haven't played that game at all since, holy shit, 2013? Wow, wow, it's been a long time. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's definitely high time to replay that and see if it's any good, if it holds up. Uh, definitely one of those uh, that I think... You know, maybe it'll be better on a replay. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely one of those games that deserve, deserve more appreciation. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, if they couldn't... If they seriously could not have ported Nier Automata, they should have ported the original. Like, wh where's the original? <laughs> like... <laughs> like, these excuses they have to not support the Switch, none of them make any sense. Like, when you get right down to it, like, it's just them throwing everything they have at PS4 and then not even giving Switch scraps. Like, to be honest with you, like, DMC is a great example where they released a 5, the hot new one, and then released, like, the first three in, like, piecemeal... Like separately and not not in it, not in the HD collection. Like they they literally sold you the DMC games, the, the original trilogy, like separately on the eShop, and it was just it was just bizarre. It was just such a strange decision. They they really tried to, to uh, paint this image of Nintendo being like poor, like Nintendo not being the right fit for them. Like you sort of see this. This sometimes leaks through in like investors meetings. Like EA is always making these excuses to not put their uh, their games on Switch, but. Um, hopefully companies are starting to wake up to this fact hopefully Atlas seriously considers finally putting Persona 5 on Switch it should have happened a long time ago like I'm going to be completely real like Persona 5R really should have been for Persona 5 Switch like there is no justification for this to wait this long for a port that really should have been announced with the uh, the Joker unveiling in Smash. Like, that would have been the thing to make Persona 5 huge on Switch. Is to just, like, make that announcement and then be like, yeah, and Persona 5 is coming to Switch. But instead, they're just dicking us around with this weird, like, oh, we're getting the uh, the, the Warrior spinoff, but not the real thing. Um... I'm kind of burnt out on Warrior games. I think they're too grindy, even if I really like the characters, like Fire Emblem Warriors, Hyrule Warriors, I think they're grindy and just sort of a, a kind of a waste of time, to be honest with you. So I don't think I will buy Persona 5 R, uh, Scramble, even to R. Persona 5 Scramble, even to support the Switch version. But for those of you who are, I, I highly suggest you really push this to Atlas. Really stick it to them. Like, you need to show them that the Persona audience is not on Sony consoles. They are on Nintendo handhelds. You, they are on Nintendo consoles. You cannot seriously try and pretend that, you know, the fan base that made Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Octopath Traveler, Fire on the Three Houses, Three Houses especially, you can't tell me that the fan base that makes those games successful 
would not also be super into Persona 5. It's just uh, a bunch of, um, I'm sure a lot of um, Sony fanboys are sort of denying this or sort of angry about this. They're like very, very upset about the, uh, the possibility that Persona could come to Nintendo and that they're, um, they're so, they're desperately trying to like, um, portray it as something that's never ever going to happen but um it's going to it, it has to like atlas persona 5r actually did performed lower than expected like fans did not buy the ps4 version of this game because i think everyone knows they wanted the switch version it, it wasn't like a secret like especially in japan the the switch is a massive 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 phenomenon and persona and pretty much every other game that for that matter is perfect for the switch there the long and short of it is is that there's nothing the ps4 can do that the switch can't do better like when you get right down to it like switch has like party games it has shooters it has motion controls it has fitness games it has fighting games like <laughs> What does PS4 even have? Like, when you get right down to it, the most talked about announcement for PS4 this year is that they're getting a a seven-year-old Wii U port. Like, that's their big release, the wonderful 101 PS4, a game they really shouldn't have gotten, a game that only exists because of a Kickstarter and Platinum's own greed and stupidity. Like, Persona is just, oof. Oof. Persona, I, I hope Atlas is a bit smarter about this, but really they've they've kind of um they've kind of um dropped the ball a lot. They ask the same questions just about every year. Yeah, and they keep getting the same response. Like just release the game on Switch. I just Oof. Definitely. Um, so yeah, that that definitely uh, leads me to uh, another point is that we need to stop. We need to stop supporting PlayStation in general. Um, it's not really multiple platforms, I should say. There is this sort of mindset among contemporary gamers that like it's desirable to own every single major platform on the market to pay all these subscription fees to buy all these extra controllers to do all the stuff you can on every console buy every exclusive game and support all these different platforms instead of buying one you like and then having all your games be available on it and i, I think that's where we need to go like i think we need to have a Switch, like a Nintendo console, that has the third-party games that the normies want to play. Like, we need Call of Duty, we need FIFA, we need GTA. Like, not that I want to play those games, but because I'm so sick and tired of seeing PlayStation 4 owners... PlayStation and Xbox fans dismiss Nintendo consoles because, oh, that doesn't have Call of Duty. Oh, that doesn't have GTA. Like, without those big normie draws, it's sort of like, it's this massive boat anchor around the hype for the Switch. Like, uh, a lot of the damage control around the Wii, even though the Wii was better than the competition, it didn't have GTA 4. Like, GTA 4 is complete shit, but... Uh, uh, people back then didn't think so. Like, people back then, I remember people, like, telling me all these stories about, <laughs> I took a hooker back in my car, and I adjusted the camera and watched my character as, as he, uh, he fucked her in the trunk or, or some shit, and then I murdered her and took her money. Like, that's what people like about GTA, doing stupid shit like that. It's not really a game. It's more like a... Just a, a fuck around simulator, a, a sort of thing that you can like play around with and like see all the weird shit you can do. That that's why people find it appealing. That's why people find it interesting, and that's understandable. But um, there's no reason why you should not be doing that on the Switch. In fact, there's no reason why 
GTA 4, 5, RDR 2, RDR 1. Why all these Rockstar games are not already available on Switch. Like, the only Rockstar game I think is available on Switch right now is L.A. Noire. Like, the game that nobody likes or talks about anymore. I could rant about L.A. Noire all day. Like, I love crime games. I love mysteries. I, I love that kind of stuff. But L.A. Noir is just so boring, so slow-paced, and just so uninspired. Ace Attorney is so much better. Uh, excuse me. Uh, let me ca get caught up in the chat here. Yeah, yeah. I already have Persona 5, so why would I need Persona 5R? Exactly. Like, we live in an era of DLC. Like, they seriously tried re-releasing the same game again with additional content rather than... What the fuck? Okay, they released Persona 5R instead of releasing a actual expansion to the original Persona, Persona 5. Like, you did not need to have this entire separate $60 release. In fact, that was actually a big thing with Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, is that people were upset about it being the same game with additional features. Now, now I'm sure Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are good. Like, I I, I own them myself, and I, I need to play them. I, I have so many Pokemon games I need to get through. Um, but... Um, people raged about that, and I'm not seeing the same kind of rage around Persona 5, like, I'm just seeing a lot of damage control for why it's not on Switch and not a whole lot else. Like, are, are people seriously excited about this game, or are they mostly excited about the fact that Nintendo isn't getting it? Like, that that's always the, the, uh, <laughs> That's always the uh, the take I always get when I, I see posts like hyping up Persona 5. Like, ah, it's the best RPG ever because it's not on Nintendo. I, I, it really does feel like when people seriously say, oh, Bloodborne's my favorite game ever. Oh, Persona 5 is one of my all-time favorite RPGs. Like, it feels like they're just fanboying. It, it really does. Like, when I think of my all-time favorite games, like, I come up with shit like Ocarina, Final Fantasy VII... Um, which I'm playing again right now, and it's great. Love it. Um, let's see, A Link to the Past, Super Metroid. Um, I think Samus Returns, uh, uh, Metroid 2 Remake, is actually going to be up there soon. I, I'm finishing up my second playthrough now, and I'm getting ready to talk about it. And um, that that's not one a lot of people talk about. Like, A Link Between Worlds is another one. A Fire Emblem Awakening. Uh, there are a lot of examples of like a lot of these uh, niche games, uh, you know, Little King Story. Uh, there, there are uh, oddball examples of like my favorite game ever. Like I don't look at like oh, uh, find a hardcore game on my favorite console and then just say that like oh that that's the best game ever. Uh, and you know, if Persona 5 did go multiplayer, I don't think anybody would be defending it to the extent that they do. Or, like, hyping up certain aspects of it. Like, Persona 5. Um, again, people are overtly critical of Nintendo for no reason. Like, look at all this talk about, like, the Switch Pro. Like, where's the Switch Pro? Like, who wants a Switch Pro? Like, who wanted a PS4 Pro? Like, no one. That's who. It's just, oof. Let's see. Wait. Hang on. Where was I in my hat? Yeah, I do think Nier Automata was pushed because it didn't have a... Uh, I'm not saying Nier Automata was bad exactly, but I do think it it's a bit overhyped. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm wondering what's going on with Platinum Games. This is just a really bizarre situation. I just, um, they've just been all over the place for the past couple of years, right? Um, besides Star Fox Zero and maybe Nier, they haven't released really anything since, um, what? 2013? Like, Scalebound was cancelled, and we're still not entirely sure what the deal was up with that. Like, I assumed that Microsoft was the one responsible, and I, I still hold true to that opinion, but it's very possible that Platinum themselves might have 
fucked up in some fashion. Um, I, I strongly doubt that because I think Platinum are actually, you know, talented developers, but it, it's possible. Uh, that, that's another thing. Uh, Scalebound might actually make a return because I think Platinum is trying to get it to come back in some fashion. Um, maybe Nintendo got the rights to it or something, like they got the Cuphead rights or whatever. Uh, yeah, so hopefully we see, hopefully we someday see Scalebound return because I did buy it in the Xbox One for that game. That was the reason, the only reason I bought an Xbox One because I was so ecstatic about that game. Um, I wasn't upset it wasn't coming to Nintendo consoles. I just bought another console. And uh, what happened? I was completely burned, right? Not only did the game not come out, the console itself... Well, I don't want to say it's not very good. Um, I am enjoying my Xbox One for a pretty unorthodox reason. Um, it has really good backwards compatibility. So I'm actually able to go back and play a lot of a lot of Xbox exclus exclusives that I've been meaning to play for years. Uh, Ninja Gaiden Black is probably the biggest example. So so I'm not feeling burned on the Xbox. And, and there are games I like on it, like Sleeping Dogs I, I really enjoyed. Uh, but... Yeah, for the most part, you know, modern Xbox. You, you know what I mean? Like, the Xbox today, it's it's disappointing. And um, really, definitely a waste of money overall. Like, I'm definitely not going to buy the follow-up console. I'm very happy with my uh, my backwards compatibility machine. I, I, I'm actually very disappointed that they uh, outright said that they're not going to continue updating the Xbox One library. Because I was really hoping to get, like, all the Dead or Alive games and... Um, I think that's it, to be honest with you. I think I think I have everything else. That that was the big one that I wanted, like the classic Itagaki made uh, Dead or Alive games. Let's see. Let's see. Yep. Hi, Blandrew. <laughs> I keep seeing you on Twitter. How are you doing? Let's see. Most didn't finish Bloodborne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is the biggest joke. Like. Bloodborne is always hyped as like this super popular title, and yet somehow, somehow, it has like, like what, like two percent of players got through like the first boss or something ridiculous like that. Eight percent, I, I want to say it's eight percent of players got past the first boss, and then like what two percent actually beat it. It's a, uh, it, it's bizarre. I, I imagine st 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 statistics like that are more common than you would think, but uh, yeah. Uh, it's still kind of funny to laugh at, and to see people try to spin it as like, "Oh, it's uh, it's because the game is so hard." Uh, who's OJ? Uses other consoles as shields. Uh, who's OJ? And, and uh, pff, using other consoles as shields. Uh, pff, that's an interesting statement. Could you elaborate on that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I'm happy to finally be able to uh, show my face. Yeah, yeah, there, there's simply no reason to own another console. Like, everything is available on PC or Switch. Um, I, I do firmly think uh, the, uh, the console war should um, a lot... Nintendo fans should ally themselves with PC gamers or become PC gamers as as a side thing in order to play like the third party games that refuse to come out on Nintendo. There is no reason to continue supporting these other platforms. Like why would you want to pay like sixty dollars for for PSN or for for PlayStation Online, and then another sixty for Xbox Online. That's a hundred and twenty dollars right there that could be like in your pocket. You could spend it on like a Valentine's Day present or or whatever. Like, it, it's just a needless waste of money for like a library that largely overlaps. Like, really, like, who owns an Xbox One? Like, like, does anybody? Like own all three consoles and pay for like all the subscription services on su subscription services on all of them. Like I, I don't think so. It's just that that's just kind of ludicrous to me. Like I own an Xbox One and I have never paid for Xbox Live. I, I'm planning to do it once I um, get through all my backlog and uh, 
get get around to playing Master Chief Collection because I do want to play Halo Online. I want the experience at least before I decide like what I think of Halo as a whole. I am very interested in whether or not I'll like Halo because I think that's going to be like the defining factor on whether I like I formally declare Xbox to be better than PlayStation. Uh, I'm leaning towards yes. Like, going by, like, recent acquisitions and uh, games I've played and stuff like that. Like, all the really great PlayStation games, for the most part, are just third-party games that should have been on other platforms. But um, Xbox has legit exclusives. Like, uh, Nintendo, of course, has the best exclusives in the industry. Like, I just... Oof. <laughs> There's no reason not to own a Nintendo console. And um, it always makes me laugh whenever people try to say that, like, oh, Okami and Darksiders are better than Zelda. Like, no, they fucking it. Like, shit. I own Okami and Darksiders, and both can't hold a, a candle to even, like, the most mediocre of Zelda games. Like, Phantom Hourglass, I think I do prefer over Okami. Like, I just... <sighs> Again, you hear that kind of thing all the time. Like, pretendo talk. Um, this is a great example. Um... I was just talking about this. Uh, pretendos have to spin everything to be negative towards Nintendo. So you can't talk about how much you're enjoying your Switch and all the great games that are coming out on it without shit talking the Wii U. Like Emily Rogers has been doing this a lot. Reset Era has been doing this a lot. Oh, what reason do you have to own a Wii U? Well, because I like it. That's why. It's just. They always do this. Like, they have to find some way to spin it as a negative towards Nintendo. Like, with Breath of the Wild, oh, it's a, it's a Ubisoft Tower open world game. Oh, there are better open world games out there. Oh, Zelda can't hold this candle to Dragon's Dogma, to Skyrim, to Dark Souls. To like, They always do this stuff. And uh, whenever a game does receive universal acclaim... Uh, they have to spin it in a negative fashion, like with Breath of the Wild. Uh, again, um, oh, people can't go back to the old-style Zelda games now. They're just too outdated. They're not good enough. Like, Breath of the Wild is what Zelda always should have been. Like, that kind of talk, right? And um, this sort of leaks over into other series as well. Like, um, I saw a while back a bunch of um, Donkey Kong, um, a bunch of Metroid Prime fans being upset that Donkey Kong Country Returns uh, might get a third game. The idea of Returns getting a third game, like, what? Why is Retro wasting their talents on Donkey Kong instead of working on a brand new Metroid Prime game? Like, why are you upset? Like, why are you upset that a company is making a video game? Like, they don't, they're not obligated to make the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. They're really really are not and it, it's just oof. it's just embarrassing to see how they always try to spin these kind of things as being negative towards nintendo right like starlink like how, how often did people say that like yeah yeah the industry the neo gaffers the pretendos reset era a lot of these people were way behind starlink they were going to support it it was going to be a big deal uh it was better than zero and then it came out and bombed because it was a piece of shit uh, i own it on switch i know what i'm talking about starlink is garbage uh, uh way worse than zero and pfft, I, I get the impression that no one even played starlink and yet bizarrely people still praise it just like they still praise no man's sky it's it's really bizarre like Nintendo games get all of this shit that other other developers uh, can get away with. Like, Nintendo gets shit on for, like, shit that other developers do all the time, right? Like, it's really unbelievable. Let's see. OJ is Player Essence. Ooh, yeah, Player Essence. Uh, the orange juice. The uh, <laughs> uh, OJ. Yeah, I am very familiar with Player Essence. Um, what's he... Uh, do I even want to know... Yeah, Miss a T, yep, downhill. Angry Joe doesn't even pretend to like Nintendo. Like, he hasn't reviewed a single Nintendo game since, like, Breath of the Wild in early 2017. Three years ago. All of the crazy shit that's come out since then. Mario Odyssey, uh, Octopath Traveler, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Astral Chain. Like, he didn't talk about any of that. Like, a I was baffled that he not did not talk about Astral Chain. Like, Astral Chain 
by itself is probably better than like 90% of the shit he hypes up on his channel. Like the only game I think he um, he talked positively about in the past couple of years that was in any way good was um, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I, I can't think of anything else that he hyped up that was legitimately good. You know what I mean? It, it's so bizarre seeing him like every year review like the the generic Dragon Ball Z game, right? Like he he did Xenoverse 1, he did Xenoverse 2, he did Kakarot, like he did Fighters. Like Fighters was legitimately good, but like why are you playing Dragon Ball games? Like why are you like these generic ass anime action games that like can't compete with like they're they're licensed games. Like okay, Fighter Z is legitimately good. Don't get, don't get me wrong, but like uh, Kakarot, Xenoverse, like, yeah, yeah, if you're a fan, you would be into them, but it, it's like, well, pfft, there are so many action games that are better than this, and you're not talking about them at all, really, like, it's bizarre, really, like, I, the only Nintendo Switch game I think he, like, reviewed since Breath of the Wild was, like, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, and I think that was, that was only because it was a Marvel game, like, no other reason, and I myself don't own Ultimate Alliance 3 because I think it looks like a pile of shit and I don't like Marvel, but, oof. Oh, maybe it's disingenuous to say I don't like Marvel. Uh, I imagine I would like their classic stuff if I ever got around to, like, watching these old cartoons I used to watch, but uh, I, I don't know, man. There's something about them today that I just don't like. <sighs> I think Angry Joe is, like, a poser in general. Like, not just for Nintendo, like, for gaming as a whole. Because, like, people who play a lot of video games don't <laughs> do what he does. Like, they don't stream all the time. They don't, like, talk about the big generic AAA games. They don't give GTA V a 10 out of 10 just because it's GTA V. You know, like, they don't declare Skyrim to be one of the greatest games ever made. It's, uh, Angry Joe is a pleb. Like, when you get right down to it, like, he's, he basically started gaming in, like, what, 2008? Like, the 360 was his first console or some shit. He became a gaming YouTuber, announces his career to, like, talk about these generic AAA games with, like, big budgets. It just... Oh, yeah, he defends The Witcher 3, yeah. Uh, so that, that's, that's a big reason why I don't really care for him very much. Um... Yeah, The Witcher 3 is, like, a complete disappointment. Like, I was expecting it to be bad. I really was. Like, I went into this, like, the, the entire pre-hype, um, I think I was shitting on The Witcher before it even came out. Because, like, I, I knew, like, I knew it was going to be, like, another generic AAA open world RPG. Um, it really only got hyped because PlayStation owners had nothing else to play. And, and they still don't to a certain extent. It's a now they're hyping up Cyberpunk 2077, a game that's like has a ton of stripped away features and has a ton of major red flags behind it uh, and a delay. And yet people are still not well. People are still not asking questions about it. It's just gamers are like the lowest IQ following on like uh, entertainment fan base on the on the. Um, on the spectrum, I think. Like, novels are, of course, uh, the highest. And uh, I wish I had that chart because, like, I think, like, the average gamer has, like, what, a, a 60 IQ or some shit like that. Uh, maybe that's maybe that's going a bit too far. But, uh, it, yeah, it, it's, like, a scientifically proven fact that gamers tend to be lower IQ than, like, fans of other mediums. And, and uh, I, I think this is a good example why. They're so easily bamboozled. Uh, I'm saying they because I'm not part of this demographic. But they are so easily bamboozled by these cinematic trailers, these E3 presentations, this talk of, like, Ooh, graphics and like uh, blast processing and stuff like that. Stuff like most people should be able to see through, but like, ugh. like, here we are in 2020 and people are still pretending that Switch can't run big name AAA games. It's it's unbelievable.
Yes, Death Stranding is a complete joke. Um, yeah, that that's kind of interesting, isn't it? We've never heard the end of like the failures of a, or, or the alleged failures of games like Metroid of the Rim, Paper Mario, Sticker Star, Color Splash, Star Fox Zero, a uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Uh, there are so many Nintendo games that people will rag on years after release, like literally years, decades in some cases, right? Like how many people still rage over Wind Waker and its art style, right? Like Sean Maelstrom still does that today, right? Um, nobody is talking about Death Stranding. Like what, that game came out in like what, November of last year? Three months ago? And yet it's already been completely memory hold, completely forgotten. Nobody's talking about Kojima, no one's speculating about his future, no one's like really uh, wondering where things are gonna go from here. Like there are just a bunch of damage control posts on Twitter from like these, uh, these probably paid shills talking about like what an innovative experience Death Stranding was to play. But other than that, I, I think every, the game was a disaster, and no one wants to admit it or even talk about it at all. Like Shenmue 3 is in the same boat. Seven million dollars for a Kickstarter backing for that. Like, uh, that, that's one of the reasons I'm so upset with the, uh, the Wonderful 101 Kickstarter, actually, is because of Shenmue 3. Because, like, I thought that was the most disgraceful thing I'd ever seen in my life. And, um, it, it um... Am I more angry about this or that? I guess I am more angry about this, probably because I'm more personally invested. But yeah, Shenmue 3 was very, very shitty. People should have called that out for what it was long before the game actually came out. And now that it is now out and the Shenmue leg legacy is basically dead, like that entire hype behind Shenmue 3, like the sequel that never was, it it's completely gone. It's evaporated. Poof, like that. Like nothing completely gone and yet no one is really addressing how big of a disappointment it is how this thing literally destroyed an entire gaming legacy because for better or worse you can kind of argue that Shenmue was like an innovative title that really pushed boundaries maybe it wasn't a great game I, I still haven't played it myself but uh, people wanted to see a sequel and Shenmue 3 did not deliver on what longtime fans wanted from the series which was a proper conclusion um yes yes metroid is by far nintendo's most overrated franchise uh, among hardcore fans i i do think it's mostly because of its mature aesthetic and how it's like a people can pretend it's like cool and hardcore like uh, metroid's not a bad series at all but like um i i, I do really like it but the fans do get really, really obnoxious. Uh, that cannot be understated. They are the absolute worst. Or they were the absolute worst. They've calmed down a lot lately uh, because Prime 4 got announced. Uh, as long as there's, there's a new Metroid game on the way, they seem to be like somewhat complacent. But man, when there's not, they tend to get really, really shitty. Uh, yep, yep. Yes, Angry Joe does copy-paste complaints. I can't confirm that. Uh, yep. <laughs> Dead career. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Days Gone came out. Holy shit. I completely forgot about that. Oh, no. Edelgard. I saw Edelgard's picture. I wanted to click on that and show her off, but... Now, oh, by the way, I have ordered, or I'm going to order a uh, an Edelgard uh, portrait, or it's a, uh, some kind of a, it's going to go on the wall back here. Uh, it's some fan-made thing. It's not official, but um, yeah, I am going to do it. I am going to do it. I am going to have like, okay, I, I, I'm going to, I have a Samus one picked out and I have a Bayonetta one picked out. The Bayonetta one is like the one with like, uh, the Smash Bros, it's the Platinum poster. You know what I mean? When, like, she was revealed for Smash. That, like, really gorgeous spread. So, like, I have, like, three waifus on the way for my wall. And I, I'm just so, I'm just so ecstatic. Who is the best out of those three? Like, ugh. Samus, probably. Presumably. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Samus myself. 
let's see. Let's see, is there anything else to talk about? How long have I been streaming? A while, right? Let's see. Have I talked about, let's see, Persona 5R? Uh, yeah, yeah, the PlayStation 4. Um, I don't know how Platinum thinks. Platinum and I think other third parties are, are kind of under this assumption that just because the PS4 is out and just because it sold, like, allegedly sold so many units that... Uh, that means there's a huge market for their games out there, but I really, really don't think that's the case. Like, I really don't think so. Like, everyone is buying games on Switch. Like, like other than, like, some some major, like, AAA games that aren't available on Switch, nothing is, nothing is selling on PS4. So, what I'm expecting is going to happen with the Wonderful 101 is that the Switch version is going to considerably outsell it, like legitimately outsell it. I, I don't expect a lot of PS4 versions to be requested. I expect like the vast majority of the Kickstarter backers to go for PC and then actual sales, for like in-store sales, are going to go to Nintendo and then PS4 copies are just going to sit there. Like we are at the point, I think, where uh, people are burned out on the PS4, they don't enjoy it, like the games feel old, they feel outdated, like they feel like more of the same, and, and that's kind of reflecting in the sales charts, right? Yeah, because the 7 didn't do well, Persona 5 R didn't do well. Um, where, where are the Japanese sales charts? Um, most recent uh, Famitsu sales. Yeah, let's look at these uh, Famitsu scales so you know what I'm talking about. Oh. Hang on, that's Gamatsu. Let's see. The most recent ones. Yeah, Famitsu Archive, let's see. Yep, yeah, uh, yep. January of this year? To yeah, let's, let's take a look at like uh, how things are selling in Japan, right? Uh, Rank Fit Adventure, Pokemon Sword. Which is an old game. Yakuza. Dragon Ball. So like we're seeing these old Switch games outperform these relatively newer PS4 games, right? Uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate, right? Yeah, yeah Yakuza um, has considerably done worse than uh, previous entries. Um, yet these are going to drop like rocks while these are going to stay. Basically, honestly, I'm, I'm I'm shocked that like PS4 titles are on this list at all. When you get right down to it, usually the entire list is just filled with Switch games. So basically, these two PS4 games, the highest on the list, should have been on Switch. There's no reason for them not to be. Like, you can't convince me that Yakuza cannot run on Switch. You cannot convince me that Kakarot cannot run on Switch. It's just, it's a complete joke to suggest otherwise. Uh, let's see, Mario Kart Deluxe. Let's see. Yep, Super Mario Party. Great game, by the way. Ooh, I wanted to. I wanted to finish it tonight. I, <laughs> I'm well on my way to uh, beating Super Mario Party, and I have to say, this might actually be my second favorite game in the entire series. Um, only behind the iconic and classic Mario Party Two. I'm very, very pleased with Super Mario Party. Very, very impressed with it. I mean, look at this. Luigi's Mansion 3, Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Maker 2, uh, Spirits. Is that Captain Tsubasa? Is that the Captain Tsubasa game or is that something else? Sometimes the Japanese names throw me off. Uh, Mario and Sonic, Sentinels. Yep, PS4, 3,000. Ooh, look at those sales. Ooh, 60,000, 30,000. Are you serious? That's awful. Like, yeah, compare that to Dragon Quest Eleven on Switch, like, 480,000. On Switch, like, that was a late port, too. Just unbelievable. Yeah, Tokyo Mirage Sessions is uh, behind it. Oof. Three houses. Yep, Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Ooh. Yeah, when are we going to get our Story of Seasons games? Because... We haven't gotten one at all since Trio of Towns, which I actually haven't bought yet. Uh, I think I will wait for a Switch game because um, I I do not like the original Story of Seasons. Uh, the original Story of Seasons. <laughs> um, I thought it was kind of lackluster. Um, they need to improve it a bit. 
I mean, I think they have it in them, but it's just like, ugh, they really need to get the Harvest Moon formula back, and they really need to like learn how to build off it, because I, I don't think they ever really learned how to do that. I, I think there's this kind of consensus among fans that like, yeah, the first two games are classic. Uh, 64 is a classic. And then they just kind of went downhill. All right, I think that's everything. Uh, let's see, we bitched about the wonderful 101. We talked about PS4 sales. Uh, yes, so definitely, uh, we're, we definitely need to keep an eye on upcoming Nintendo Switch releases. There's plenty of exciting things coming out. I'm very, very excited about the future of the gaming console. Uh, the future of Nintendo Switch, um, I would suggest supporting the wonderful 101 on Switch, uh, not the Kickstarter, just, just buy the game. There's no reason to support the Kickstarter. Um, uh, I'm interested in seeing what other games in the Platinum 4 get announced, and uh, I think we need to preemptively request that these are these games, that all of them should be available on Switch. Like, there's no reason... They shouldn't be. Like, Nier Automata really needs to come to Switch, and uh, every other future Platinum project needs to have a Switch version. That is paramount. Uh, every third party should be developing a Switch version of their games, uh, which should launch alongside the other versions. And um, other consoles need to be phased out. Like, PlayStation, like, Xbox, like, they don't need to exist anymore. We just need to... Uh, those companies can just support use their software, the the uh, developers they own, and put out Switch games. There's no reason to continue this farce of, like, creating multiple video game platforms. Just let Nintendo handle that. It's good, bro. You can focus on your games, your generic schlock. Uh, we don't want your hardware. Um, all right. I think that's everything. And, um, right. Should this be an every Friday thing? That, that's the main thing. Um. Definitely got a little bit of an audience tonight. I'm very, very pleased with my numbers here. And, um, yeah. Please consider supporting my books. A Cruel and Beautiful launches um, one week from now on Friday, the Valentine's Day. I'm so, so excited about it. Uh, lots of things. I'm <laughs> uh, really, really looking forward to it. And I will see you all next time.